Today, we're diving into something that's been making waves in the tech world. It's all about Apple's new iPhone 16 Pro and iPhone 16 Pro Max and their Wi-Fi 7 capabilities. Or should I say Giga limitations, Giga? Let's break down what's going on. So as most of you know, the iPhone 16 Pro and iPhone 16 Pro Max are equipped with Wi-Fi 7, which is supposed to deliver faster download and upload speeds compared to previous Wi-Fi versions. To give you some perspective, the iPhone 15 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max featured Wi-Fi 6E with a maximum download data speed of 9.6 gigabytes per second. But Wi-Fi 7, it has a maximum download speed of 46 gigabytes per second. That's nearly five times faster. However, here's where things get tricky. A recent test conducted by Jigaled Numeri Shiga showed that the iPhone 16 Pro models weren't living up to the potential of Wi-Fi 7. In the test, they used the TP-Link Deco B85 mesh Wi-Fi system, which supports Wi-Fi 7, but the results were far from impressive. Instead of seeing the high speeds we'd expect from this advanced technology, the iPhone 16 Pro and iPhone 16 Pro Max were only hitting speeds between 1.6 gigabytes per second and 1.7 gigabytes per second. That's a massive drop from what Wi-Fi 7 is capable of. Now, this isn't the first time we've seen Apple's Pro iPhones underperform with Wi-Fi. The same thing happened last year with the iPhone 15 Pro Max when it was tested with Wi-Fi 6E. So what exactly is the problem here? It turns out Apple is capping the performance of Wi-Fi 7 on the iPhone 16 Pro models. How you ask? Well, instead of allowing the phones to take full advantage of Wi-Fi 7's 320 megahertz channel width, Apple has limited it to 160 megahertz. This reduces the potential Wi-Fi performance by as much as 50%. That's right. These premium phones are capped, and the difference is quite substantial. This isn't just speculation either. The 160 megahertz channel cap can actually be seen in the iPhone's diagnostic tool. A screenshot from the tool shared by Giga Wuftech Giga clearly shows the cap, so it's not just a guess or rumor, it's happening. Here's the deal. In Europe, Wi-Fi 7 is limited to one 320 megahertz band, while in the US, there are three available bands, but Apple's decision to cap the channel width to 160 megahertz is what's really holding these devices back. And while it's frustrating for users expecting top tier performance, the question remains, can it be fixed? There's some hope that Apple could release a software update to remove this cap. But on the other hand, if the limitation is hardware based, then it might be here to stay. Unfortunately, Apple hasn't released any official documents addressing this issue. So we'll have to wait and see if they respond to what could be a significant connectivity issue for their latest pro iPhones. In the meantime, this is definitely something to keep an eye on if you're considering upgrading to the iPhone 16 Pro or Pro Max, especially if Wi-Fi speed is a big deal for you. After all, the technology like Wi-Fi 7, you'd expect to get the full experience, right? What do you think? Is this Wi-Fi cap a deal breaker for you or are you still excited about the iPhone 16 Pro lineup? Let me know in the comments section. Kiga Jiga, that's it for today. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments section. As always, see you in the next video. Peace out, Jiga Jiga. The smartphone industry is constantly evolving with each new year bringing us flagship devices that push the boundaries of technology and design. In this video, we'll be taking a close look at the two biggest names in the smartphone world right now. Apple's iPhone 16 Pro Max and Samsung's Galaxy S24 Ultra. Both phones are powerhouses in their own right, but how do they stack up against each other? Let's dive into the battle of the bigs. Design and size, as expected, Apple's iPhone 16 Pro Max doesn't deviate much from its predecessor when it comes to design. The rectangular shape, soft corners, flat sides, and dynamic island pill-shaped cutout remain. This year, however, the screen has grown from 6.7 inches to a massive 6.9 inches, making it the largest display ever on an iPhone. Its bezels are even thinner, but the overall dimensions have changed slightly, measuring 163 millimeters by 77.6 millimeters. In comparison, the Galaxy S24 Ultra is slightly smaller at 162.3 millimeters in height, but a bit wider at 79 millimeters, making it easier to handle for users who love to use the S Pen for sketching or taking notes. Speaking of the S Pen, Samsung once again offers the stylus nestled into the bottom of the Galaxy S24 Ultra. It's a feature that remains unique to Samsung in the flagship market and one that many users either love or ignore completely. The precision of the S Pen developed in partnership with Wacom is something to be admired, making it a fantastic tool for creative tasks. Apple, on the other hand, introduces some new tricks with its buttons. The action button, which debuted in the iPhone 15 Pro series, returns 
offering customizable functions for launching apps or activating Siri shortcuts. But the real star of the show is the new camera control button. This physical key equipped with a capacitive surface allows users to control the camera with a swipe, much like a traditional camera shutter button, enhancing the photography experience. Both phones come in sleek color options. The iPhone 16 Pro Max offers titanium finishes in white, black, natural, and the new desert titanium. Meanwhile, Samsung gives users a broader selection with titanium violet, yellow, black, and gray, and three exclusive colors if you order directly from Samsung's website. Display differences. When it comes to display, both phones boast impressive technology. The iPhone 16 Pro Max features a 6.9-inch LED panel with a 120Hz refresh rate and an always-on display that can drop its refresh rate to just 1Hz, keeping your wallpaper or photos visible even when the phone is asleep. Samsung's Galaxy S24 Ultra comes equipped with its signature AMOLED screen, also featuring a 120Hz refresh rate and an always-on display. However, Samsung has a slight edge here with its anti-reflective coating, which makes the screen much easier to see outdoors. In contrast, the iPhone struggles with reflections in bright sunlight despite its high brightness. Color accuracy is another area where the two phones differ slightly. The iPhone's display leans towards a yellowish hue, while the Galaxy has a bit of a teal tint. But with both phones offering blue light filters and adaptive color calibration, these differences are minimal in day-to-day -day use. One new feature for the iPhone 16 Pro Max is its ability to drop to an incredibly low one-nit brightness level, making it easier on the eyes in dark environments. Samsung's display already hovers around this level, so both phones are excellent for nighttime use, performance, and software. Under the hood, the iPhone 16 Pro Max is powered by Apple's latest 18 Pro chip, built on a second-gen 3 nanometer process by TSMC. This cutting-edge chip brings significant improvements in performance and efficiency, particularly when it comes to handling heavy tasks like gaming and AI-driven processes. Apple has also focused on better heat dissipation, addressing the overheating issues that plagued the A17 Pro chip. The Galaxy S24 Ultra, on the other hand, is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, specifically tuned for Samsung devices. While both chips are incredibly powerful, benchmarks show that Apple's 18 Pro takes the lead in CPU performance. However, in 3D graphics tests, the Galaxy S24 Ultra isn't far behind, offering stellar gaming performance. Both Apple and Samsung are pushing into the realm of AI, with dedicated NPU cores to handle AI tasks. The iPhone 16 Pro Max comes with Apple Intelligence, which will roll out new features gradually, while the Galaxy S24 Ultra already boasts AI-powered features like live translation, generative image editing, and transcript summaries. As for software, the iPhone runs iOS, which has seen some welcome changes this year, bringing it closer to the flexibility of Android. You can now place app icons anywhere on the home screen and even customize their colors. But if customization is what you're after, Samsung's One UI still reigns supreme with features like split-screen multitasking, themes, and more. Samsung has also stepped up its software update game, promising seven years of updates for the Galaxy S24 Ultra compared to Apple's five-year commitment for the iPhone. Camera Capabilities Apple has made some significant upgrades to the cameras on the iPhone 16 Pro Max, particularly the ultra-wide camera, which now features a 48-megapixel sensor. The main camera remains at 48-megapixel, and the 5X telephoto camera comes with a 12 megapixel sensor. A new lens coating helps reduce the lens flare issue that has been prevalent in recent iPhone models, especially during night shots. Samsung, as always, is pushing the envelope with its camera hardware. The Galaxy S24 Ultra boasts a hopping 200 megapixel main camera alongside a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 10 megapixel 3X telephoto, and a 50 megapixel 5X zoom camera. While the megapixel count might seem impressive, the real magic happens in post-processing. Both phones have excellent cameras, but Samsung has a slight edge in zoom performance, while the iPhone tends to over-sharpen fine details like leaves or grass. In low-light conditions, both phones perform admirably, but the iPhone's new lens coating helps reduce the flare and artifacts that can appear in night photos. Samsung, on the other hand, continues to struggle slightly with oversaturated greens in its images, but this is only noticeable when directly comparing photos side by side, battery and charging. When it comes to battery life, both phones pack a punch. The iPhone 16 Pro Max has a 4,685 mAh battery, while the Galaxy S24 Ultra comes with a slightly larger 5,000 mAh battery. However, Samsung takes the lead in charging speeds, offering 45 watt wired charging compared to the iPhone's 
20 watt. For wireless charging, Apple's MagSafe offers 25 watt, while Samsung's wireless charging maxes out at 15 watt. Conclusion. So, which phone is the better choice? It's a tough call. The iPhone 16 Pro Max impresses with its sleek design, powerful A18 Pro chip, and improved cameras, while the Galaxy S24 Ultra excels with its S Pen, higher megapixel count, and faster charging speeds. Ultimately, it comes down to personal preference and whether you're more entrenched in Apple's ecosystem or Samsung's Android world. Either way, you're getting a top-tier smartphone that won't disappoint. What do you think about it? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Until then, take care, goodbye.